My name is Steve Riggan and we're going to teach you about floating point binary numbers. So first of all these are the place values for normal binary and we can represent a number like um, 48 simply by placing ones in the respective places. So in binary the number 48 would be um, in 8-bit 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. But the problem with normal binary is when we are trying to deal with floating point numbers. Now usually floating point numbers are 32-bit for single precision and 64-bit for double precision. But we're going to just use 8-bit numbers so that you get the general idea. And what we've got to be able to do is represent a number with a fractional part. We've got a whole number and then we have a half. So it can be uh, written in deanery as that or as you know two and a half. So basically what we have to do is change the place numbers so that we can have fractional values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write four bits here and then above each place number you know that it's 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2 and 2 to the power of 3. But in that we can only um, represent the whole number portion of the number 2.5 or 2.5. So think about it, 2 to the power of 0 and 2 to the power of 1, that is doubling the number. So 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8. So equally it's logical if we can go the other way. So what I'm going to do is put 2 to the power of minus 1, 2 to the power of minus 2, 2 to the power of minus 4, or oh sorry 3, and 2 to the power of minus 4. So if we halve that number there, we get half. Halve it again, we get a quarter, halve it again, we get an eight, and halve it again, we get a sixteenth. Now if we go from right to left, uh, double uh, one sixteenth, you get one eighth, double that, one um, quarter, double that, you get half, double that, you get a whole. So it works exactly the same. And if we put a decimal point there, we can now represent the number 2.5 using a fixed point binary number. All we simply do is place a 1 in there and a 1 on the half and then fill the rest in with zeros. Now as long as we know where the place value is we don't have to even show the decimal point. The number would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 and that would be our representation of 2.5. <clears throat> but we have to be able to store very um, very small and very big numbers using 8 bits in this case. Remember we would use 32 and um, 64 bit numbers um, <coughs> in reality. <coughs> so what we have to do is uh, represent them like you do deanery numbers in standard form. You've probably seen this on a calculator where we've got a number that's very small that won't fit on your calculator screen. So you've got that. And say we've only got five or digits on the calculator screen, you're only going to get this portion here. Um, or if it's a very large number, it won't all be able to be represented. So a way of doing this is to get rid of all of these lead zeros up to the decimal point. And we do that by floating the point in a negative way. That means to the right. So we can float it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So what we end up with is a number like this. Now what we can do is say that we've times that by 10, but to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be a way of representing that. Now this number here, minus 5, is called 
an exponent. You've probably seen expo or x or e or, um, used on the calculator screen. And this part here, which is the magnitude of the number, the size of the number, is called a mantissa. Okay? So we have two parts of the number. We have the mantissa, which is the number part, the value, and we have the exponent, which is the, is the value we use to float the point in a negative fashion there. If, it, if we went that way to make the number even smaller, we would then, it would be a positive number. So we can do exactly the same in binary. So let's take a binary number and let's say the number we're going for is um, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. We can now imagine that we're going to use four bits as the mantissa. and four bits as the exponent. So we can work that out by representing it in standard form. Now this time it's not times 10 because every movement of the, of the decimal place is a times by 2 or minus by 2 and in this case We've got this number in the exponent, so we can say that that's 1, 2, 4, and in this case it's a 2 complement number. All exponents are 2 complement numbers, so we can see that that number there is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0, which is actually 2. Now on this side, it's not no because the decimal points that way, you actually put the, the real values above it. So that's going to be minus one because it's a two complements number so that can be the highest value when it is in uh, a mantissa that's going to be half that's going to be a quarter and that is going to be an eighth now that is not the true number that's just a representation of it remember that we compress the number down by floating the point so let's take the mantissa 0.1 one zero and we're going to float the number unpack it so we're going the other way we're going to float the number back to its original um, place so one and two so the number we come out with now is zero one one and then we'd have a decimal place there and that there but we don't really need that because there's no fractional value. So you can put 1, 2 and minus 4 up there because that's the highest thing we've been. And you then have your number, which is 3. So the number 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 um, is the number 3 when we do that in floating point notation. So let's see how we can rep represent a deanery number as a floating point number. So we'll take the number 96. Okay, the first thing you need to do to, to find out what the number 96 is, is you have to um, put the normal powers up and find out how many you need. So you go until uh, just above the number of bits that you want. So we need 128, um, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Okay, so we just represent it, so it's going to be a positive number. We're going to 64, and that make uh, 96, so we can turn the rest of them to zeros. 
Now, if you look at that number there, you can see where the decimal point would be. It would be up this end here. So in order to pack that in to a 4-bit mantissa, Um, using a 4-bit uh, exponent, I'll just put that there, we would have to float the point in that direction. Because it's forward, it's going to be a positive number. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we're going to float the number seven places. So let's write out the mantissa then. So it would be 0 0.110 because we only have four bits for the mantissa up here. Then we would say times two and now we have floated it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So we would then up here write that number out like that. So then, now you have the binary floating point binary number because you would write it out like this with no decimal place. That's a mantissa. That's the exponent there. And that would give you the floating point representation for the number 96. Okay, so a few key things that you have to remember. When you're um, using a mantissa and an exponent, remember that the mantissa's value is always starts with minus one when it's packed in, half, quarter, and an eighth. And the um, exponent is always a normal four bit two complements number, like that. That means then that we can have a exponent that can drive the decimal place minus eight places and seven places, either direction. So we can either make the number a, a, a very small number, um, pack it up so that there, it takes up less space and we can take a very big number and pack it down so it takes up um, less space. Okay then, that's floating point numbers for you.